Okay, hopefully you're seeing on the screen this matrix that encodes all the information for this network I have on the board still. So I'm going to go back to my original question, which was, you know, I had a very simple diagram. How many ways are there to go from one to three? Well, I'm willing to make one layover, one stop in city two. So I'm going to ask a more general question. How many ways can I get, say, from uh, city one to city four, uh, yeah, four, that'll do, in one layover? Most, exactly one layover. So I'll be, I'll be I'll willing to go the cheap fare. I will, I will do one stop to make a cheaper airfare to get from city one to city four. All right. To get from one to four, I could do all the ways to go from one to one, and then all the ways that get me from one to four, have a layover at one itself. Well, I could do that by multiplication principle. There's one way to get from one to one, and there's zero ways to get from one to four directly. There are actually one times zero ways to complete that task. Or I could have a layover at city two, go from all the ways to get from one to two, then get from two to four, and ask how many ways can do in total be multiplication principle, A ways times and B ways gives me A times B ways. How many ways can get from one to two? Uh, one to two, what is one to two? One to two is this, it's three ways. How many ways can get from two to four? Two to four is one way. I get three times one, which is three. Or I could have a layover at city three. Get myself from one to three, get myself, whoops, from three to four, and multiply them together by multiplication principle. Uh, one to three is one, three is this guy, and three, four, three, four is this guy. Zero times one is zero. And layover at city four, I can go one to four, zero ways, oh, times four to four, zero ways, zero. And add them up, gives me zero plus three plus zero plus zero is three ways. All right, all right. But look what I just did. I mean, the numbers aren't very interesting here, lots of zeros. But to work, to get from one to four, what I had to do was go P11, P14, layover at city one, plus all the possibilities of the layer at city two, plus all the uh, layovers at city three, plus all the layovers at city four. That's the sort of general formula for how I worked out the number of ways to get from one to four with one layover. All right, that's a very scary looking formula, but in general, I would like to say that uh, this is, has meaning. Okay, has meaning, what am I saying there? P11 times P14, P12 times P24, P13 times P34, whoops, that's funny, plus P14 times P4. It's like I've taken the first row and the second row and I combine them on these pairwise, so fourth column and are these pairwise columns. All right, so mathematicians having noted that this thing, this sort of product comes up a lot, will define a matrix times itself by following this very formula. So this is gonna be messy and I should really slow down, but I'm assuming, dear viewer, that you have no matrix multiplication. At least you can see matrix multiplication going here. This is a way to invite you to think about how to present this to students. So matrix P times P will have the one fourth entry. That's gonna be the number of ways to do a two fold journey between the cities that P represents is going to be given by P1, um, one, P1, four, plus P1, two, P2, four, and so on. Or in general, the ith jth entry of the two-fold matrix would be i, j, i, j, and sum all the individual middle, middles. Well, p, p is kind of weird. People call that matrix p squared, and the matrix multiplication has meaning. p squared is, its ith jth entry is like this ith row and the jth column. That's what this is really doing. Well, those entries combined in a clever way. That, to me, is the natural way to define matrix multiplication. It just seems natural. This is the sort of formula that comes up, and that's why the weird notation we have here of multiplying rows by columns is very, very strange, but I was kind of forced to do that in how I set this guy up. Now, I've done two matrices, P and P, that are identical. I can actually give meaning to the matrix multiplication of two different matrices. So, let's now talk about that, and let me clean the board. Okay. Now, two different matrices. So in my world, a matrix is a coding for two different diagrams of a network between city routes or something. So suppose I had two different networks, like there's the blue airline that has all these routes between four cities, and the orange airline has a different set of routes between the same four cities. So I'll call one airline A and airline B. 
So then they each can have their four by four matrices explaining their root information. And I can ask, what does A plus B mean? Well, that means I'm going to add up the entries component-wise. I guess the, if you tried to make a guess what that could be, but add up each individual ent ent entries. And there's a geometric interpretation to the matrix you get by adding entries turn by turn, like the one fourth entry plus the one fourth entry, the seven, the two fifth, uh, two third entry plus the two third entry, so on. This would be the matrix for the entire diagram, ignoring color. Great. So that's a great way to motivate to kids what matrix as addition can be. Or, if I said 2a, if you had to make a guess what 2a means, well, it's probably a plus a in one sense, or just double all the entries of a, what does that mean geometrically? Well, it means that airline a has actually just doubled the number of routes that it's had before on every possible place. It's decided to go for more efficiency. That would be the a matrix for a doubled system, and so on. So actually, this is a good way to motivate matrix addition, matrix scalar multiplication, as they call it. You probably do matrix subtraction the same way. What does that mean? I guess airlines are taking away routes. Um, grand. Good, good, good stuff. But then I can also ask, what is A times B going to mean? So before I had P times P, matrix times itself, but A times B does actually have an interpretation as well. Suppose I insist on going from city one to city four, and I want to first fly the A airline, and then I want to fly the B airline, airline second. Why I want to do that, I don't really know. Well, what, what I need to do is I have to get myself from one, right now, I'll have a layover. So I can either go from city one to, so I'm going from one to four again. City one to city one, with the American, with the, sorry, American, an airline, whoops. And then city one to four with the second airline, the uh, Botswana Airlines, I don't know, something. Okay, or I can get from American Airlines one to city two and then go from Botswana two to, two to four. Or I can go Air, American Airlines one to three, Botswana three to four. Or I can go to American Airlines one to four, Botswana four to four, and so on. So actually, if I want to count the number of ways to get between two cities by first going one airline and a second, then a second airline, then that actually motivates matrix multiplication of two different matrices. So there it goes. I mean, one should write a careful, detailed curriculum unit of all this, but I think network systems are a great way to explain matrices. I think it's really key to explain what the word matrix means in everyday language, so the background substance that hold things into place. Having that in your head makes the mysterious word matrix make sense. Mathematicians aren't random creatures, they do sensible things. And, um, and these ghastly looking formulas actually explain this whole row times column business, which is very, very mysterious and strange. I should tell you, mathematicians spent a very long time in the 1800s trying to figure out the right way to um, no notate these things. The notation was very hard battle. And it turns out, it seems, at least in this context, rows times columns are the natural way to go. But, but you know, that sort of context, students don't have anything to hold on to. This is their only experience of matrices so far. Just, you know, deal with this problem as it stands. All right. Um, I think that's all I want to just touch on for this one approach to matrices, and I actually do do this with students, and we go explore this and leave it here, and then we change subjects completely. Here comes a second idea that then also leads us to matrices again. This is the key thing in mathematics. It was a lovely surprise that multiple roots seem to always come together and collide in a common theme. That's the, you, know, you don't realize that until after you've done the work. So it's very important the student experience is to deal with one theme and leave it at that. Don't bring in too many connections, then deal with the second theme and let those connections naturally evolve. So idea number two is gonna come up next, which will lead us to something we also wanna call matrices, and then we'll see if it connects with this in any way, shape or form. Thanks.